Bloomberg News. Jim Rogers is chairman of Rogers Holding, and he joins us now live on the telephone with his reaction to Geithner's plan for the second half of the TARP and the subsequent market sell-off. Jim, I said you were on the phone, but hey, lucky me, I see you live and in person there in Singapore. Great to have you with us. <laughs> All right, so Wall Street Likewise, saying Laurie. Geithner bomb. Jim, what do you think? Well, listen, Mr. Geithner has been bombing for 15 years. Mr. Biden caused this job, this problem. You know, Mr. Geithner has been head of the New York Fed for several years. That was the office that was supposed to be supervising Wall Street and the banking system. He caused the problem. Then all last year, he came up with TARP. He came up with all these absurd bailouts. Listen, Mr. Geithner has never known what he's doing. He doesn't know what he's doing now. And pretty soon, everybody's going to find out, including Mr. Obama. So then... You know, how do you, one of the key points with the bank bailout here, how do you assign value to all these toxic assets so everyone knows where the banks stand and we can just move past this crisis once and for all? Laura, the way you do this is you do what America told Japan to do in the 90s. You let them go bankrupt. You clean out the system. You wipe everybody out who's insolvent, and then the solvent people take over and start over. In, 19, in the 1990s, Mr. Greenspan went to Japan and said, you're doing it wrong. You've got to let people go bankrupt. You've got to clean out the system. The Japanese didn't do it. They continued to prop up zombie banks and zombie companies, and they still talk about the lost decade. Mr. Geithner was supposed in Japan in the 1990s. You know what he said the other day? I almost fell on the floor. He said, well, it's because the Japanese didn't spend enough money. Boulder Dash, the Japanese did nothing but spend money, and at the same time, they refused to clean out the banking system. America's making exactly the same mistake, and the politicians are making it worse, not better. And you know why but they're, Jim, making, it better, think... they're making it worse, Lord? They want to support their friends on Wall Street and the bankers so they can all keep their Maseratis or their Ferraris or whatever they're driving. Jim, let me jump in here and say there's no bad bank. They're not coming out with this bad bank to absorb the toxic assets. So isn't that something that, listening to your comments just now, you would agree with? No, what do you mean they're no bad banks? They're not letting people fail. I mean, the, what the, Swi the Swedes did, they took the banks and, the, and they said, okay, you put your bad assets over here, you keep your good assets here, and then we start over, and those of you who are still have some good assets can, can revive, you revive. I mean, the Swedes at least did that. But nobody, the idea that the U.S. government is now going to go and buy these, these toxic assets, who's going to set the price, Laurie? Either the banks are, and they're going to set it too high, and the taxpayers are going to lose out, or they're going to set it too low. It's not going to work. It never has worked. Is it, this, this, is not, this approach has never worked, Laurie. But it seems that part of the Geithner plan, and again, I'm playing devil's advocate here, is to go ahead without the bad bank and, and let some of these banks fail. Who? Who's he going to let fail? I haven't seen that. The they put out $350 billion last year. They put out $350 billion last year, and they all continued to pay their dividends. They all continued to pay their bonuses. Who failed? You don't, you don't fail when you continue to pay out dividends with government money. You don't fail when you pay out bonuses with government money. So then what would work? You probably heard our story, Bill Gross, PIMCO this morning saying, unless we get more government funding, we're in for a second wave of a global crisis. He's even throwing out the term mini depression as a risk. If we do get more money, we're going to have a depression. I mean, Mr. Gross has got it exactly wrong. It doesn't do any good to take money from over here that you either print or borrow or tax and put it over here. Of course, the guys over here love it that you're doing all that, but it weakens the whole system. This has never worked. You know, go back and look at what has worked in history. Look at what South Korea did or Russia or Mexico, the countries that took their pain. It was horrible pain for a year or two, but then they came out of it, and every one of those countries became rapidly growing, fast, uh, sound economies for several years. The countries which did it our way never came out of it until a long, long time later, if ever. Jim, be more specific. This is not if you were writing... the law. I'm just telling you what has happened and what hasn't happened. I mean, what has worked in the past and what hasn't worked. All right, so if you're writing this big But I don't have a plan. Lamborghini. <laughs> oh, gosh. Don't mince pardon? words, Jim, really. Don't beat around the bush for us. What did you want to hear from Geithner yesterday? 
I would have loved for Mr. Guyton to say, listen, guys, we're in a serious problem. We didn't cause the problem, although he did cause the problem. Mr. Obama could have said, we've got a horrible problem. We've got to, sort, we've got to make up for a lot of excesses that have taken place over the last 10 years. Some people are going to suffer. We have umbrellas. We have safety nets. We will help our best to tra help all of you who get affected by all this. But it's going to be tough for a couple of years. Don't worry, America will come out of this in the end. As we increase our savings, if we increase our investment, everything will be fine. But what they came out and said was, look, we have a horrible problem of too much debt and too much consumption and too much borrowing. You know what we're going to do? We're going to borrow more and, and uh, go deeper into debt and consume more. So how are you how keeping your you head above water in this climate? By that? How are you by making doing money, the same Jim? Thing? Did you catch my last question? How am I making money? I, well, I, I've been Aria? selling short here again. I, I sold, I covered most of my shorts back in the, in the fall, but I've been shorting again because I can see these guys don't know what they're doing. Shorting what? I know as of December 24th, you were telling us shorting you were shorting long-term U.S. Uh, notes, about 20 seconds. No, no, I've covered those because of Mr. Bernanke. Uh, IBM, GE, uh, J.P. Morgan, you know, same old companies. Jim, gosh, we're out of time. Always a pleasure. A lot of fun talking to you. Thanks for your insights. Hear more Bloomberg News reports on the Bloomberg Terminal at AVGO, on Bloomberg Television, and on Bloomberg Radio. Copyright Bloomberg LP.